This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and you don't get to be the one in best of one without adapting a little. And what we're doing today is adapting Sultai Control, one of the best decks in standard, some would say the best, and we are adapting it to 2021, where it actually loses some key pieces and it requires a bit of finesse, I would say. So what I've got here in this deck, we have lost that which is Nyssa. We have lost that which is Krasis. And some say the deck still has Uro. Uro, in fact, is probably the best reason to play Sultai here in this format because it's one of the most powerful cards in the format. But it's not the same. Um, without Nyssa and without Krasis, a lot of power is lost and replacing them is more work than I think people realize. Because Uro on its own, like you have to fill the graveyard, you have to fill it with meaningful spells, you need fuel. And the Adventure, Simic Adventure deck is actually very good at beating Uro. While this deck, I, I tried several iterations of this deck, was not great at beating Uro. One card that you'll notice is missing is Fae of Wishes. For Fae of Wishes, you can definitely play a Wishboard. You could move, say if you wanted to, move an Agonizing Remorse and a Wilt and an Extinction Event to the sideboard and maybe even a Shark Typhoon and put in your Fae of Wish package. That is an option. I, If you enjoy that, do it. I'm not telling you not to. You know I enjoy it. I actually found my deck more successful without it. I had a hard time getting up to the mana that I needed and then turning it into resources at a quick enough rate for 2021. Whereas Fae of Wishes was, I, I would often fetch something and die. Also, the wishboard targets aren't what they used to be. They're not as powerful as they were in the last format. There's no thought distortion. There's no casualties of war. There's no mass manipulation. These powerful blowout cards don't really exist. So what happens? You end up fetching Ugin. We all know what I think of that. So here's what I did instead. I focused this whole deck, the entire main deck, on getting Uro back a lot and getting a lot of card advantage. And the way that I'm trying to win is I'm trying to set up, set up a sequence where I Agonizing Remorse, take away their removal spells, I make a massive shark, and I tap their creatures with a Gadwick, and I get in with a huge shark and an Uro, and they die. A little bit of difficult setup because as far as a win con goes it is easy to deck yourself and it is easy to do a bad setup if you are not careful so these games I think will be very testing to say the least actually spoiler alert I'm, I'm coming from the future I'm doing some evening recording on my intros wife went out hanging with a friend tonight friend needed her so here is me CGB recording in evening lighting Hope you like that. But anyway, um, the choices in the deck primarily re revolve around control the board, bring back Uro a bunch of times until we can get to a spot where we make a huge shark and then we get it through for damage. Agonizing Remorse is very key. Eliminates and Heartless Acts are very key for just keeping things dead. Extinction Event, very key for keeping the opponent off balance. Though, do watch out. If you have to name Odd, you have Uro and you have Gadwick. If you have to name Even, you have Shark Tokens. Try not to exile your own stuff unless it helps you get lethal. Four copies of Wilt. I hate losing to the frickin' Clover. Also, it's very good against Annex and Embercleave. So, it's got that going for it. And against White, you take out their Daxos, and that can be a big deal. Uh, taking out Banishing Light and Elspeth Conquers Death can be a big deal. It matters. But all in all, this is a take on Sultai that I think some of you will enjoy, and some of you will pick this up and have a very hard time with it. And it's because you have to plan out some huge turns in advance in order to win the game. It is definitely easy if you're just playing the control game of kill your threats, bring out an Uro, kill your threats, bring out an Uro. It is easy to accidentally deck yourself if you're not using Foresight. Hopefully I'll demonstrate that in these games Hopefully you enjoy that. Um, why the Ketria Triome? Oh my god, CGB, why do you have it? It has red mana. This isn't a red deck. Why? Why, CGB? Why do you have this? Um, 
40% of you at least aren't going to watch the intro and you're not going to hear me say this. So when you see people in comments saying why Ketria Trium, it could be a temple of mystery. I just want the cycling land so that I can get back my Uro. I just want to cycle it and get back my Uro. Temple of mystery, scrying is nice and all, but I'd rather cycle it and get back my Uro. Giving us a total of eight cycle lands and eight fetch lands. We bring back Uro much more often. It's actually pretty good. All right, let's dive in. And with the help of MTG Assistant, who this episode is sponsored by, we are going to let the nonsense a begin. Literally kills nothing. Will be great against adventures. All tap lands. On the play. I, I don't know, man. Looks like our opponent's coming out with goose pow power. What do you think? We can remorse it. We can also just blow up the food. But I think we save wilt for the henge and the stone coil serpent. The henge? Uh, Yorvo is super powerful card. This doesn't matter if there aren't creatures in the graveyard, and the questing beast is a ton of damage. But I guess Yorvo's the most damage. Questing beast, though, doesn't die to eliminate, which is a potential top deck. Also, we're letting them keep the ooze, so naming even is better than naming odd. Let's take the Yorvo. Yeah, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to have an eye on the top of the deck for a while, because we're going to start taking six a turn next turn, and it won't be long till we're dead. It's a draw. All right. Mana base can cast a lot of things that we could draw, but we still have to draw cards that matter. I don't know if we can pull it off. 13. Hint. That is not what we're looking for. All right, so we need to wilt the hinge. I guess we're going to cycle a triome and try to draw into the extinction event. So far, no removal drawn. Just nothing but ramp and nonsense. That's better than playing hinge. I guess they didn't have the mana for hinge, which I should have thought about. I just don't get it, man. I don't get why why I can't draw cards. All right, so should I cycle this wilt? Give myself two chances? I think we've still got to blow this up. The card advantage will bury us anyway. There's Uro. All right, let's go for, uh, see what we can do. We've got a tapped out ooze. Oh, we're not going to get the Uro back yet. Oh, wait. Nope. We need one more land. Heartbreaker. Absolute heartbreaker. And uh, this is not Fable Passage, is it? No, it is not. So we need to cycle some more. I guess we could try to hit... No, we don't have any one drop removal. Ugh. All right. We can hope that spending the mana throws the opponent off a bit. This has been a really bad game for us. Yeah, get in there, Goosey. Do it. Down to three. I would like to use my Evolving Wilds, please, to thin my deck. Why Why are we sitting here? I don't understand. All right, cycle this. Oh! All that cycling kind of got there. Even. Nice. All right, so we have Wilt. We can blow up the food to keep our opponent off four mana because Questing Beast is just lethal. And I think that's not a terrible idea. A 
Oh, they didn't make a food? Okay. And they go for a gem razor. That's... All right. That's how we die. Epic. <laughs> oh, that was a... Ru Ugh, that game... That game was frustrating. Epically frustrating. This hand looks really good. Let's see if our opponents are still all on mono green. It seems like the only people who are in mythic right now are mono green and mono red, so not surprising. Most people have to do it with aggro. Only CGB, the greatest and most powerful, can do it with all these different decks. New decks every day. Colors that are not red and green. Unbelievable. You've never seen such, such gamer. What is this opponent up to? All right, they're teamer. Might be like a Genesis Ultimatum deck, if so. We have to stop drawing removal spells and we need to start drawing Agonizing Remorse. We need to pick their hand apart. Probably should have got another black there. I have regrets. Boom! <laughs> no. <laughs> None of that, please. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just be over here doing nothing. It's fine. Just the all removal hand that we couldn't have last game. What else you got, Teamer? Yes! <laughs> Love it! Dies to Doomblade argument has never been so legit. We're almost to Uro. No! All right, all odd creatures. Terror of the Peaks, Beanstalk Giant, wait, none of that sounds like I'm going to enjoy it. Okay, even odd. No scavenging news. <laughs> okay. Let's go with, well, do I care about either of these? I'm already committed. We'll just go with even then. All right, Uro, you're finally back. Help me out. I'm trying to show off a deck and I keep drawing crap. Help me, help me find the good cards. Ah, oh, I need one more mana for this. Ah, oh, I should have, if I had brought back Uro first and I wouldn't Extinction Event, I'd much rather Remorse. I played that turn badly. Badly, badly, badly. But let's see, can they punish me for it? Kogla, we fight. Let them fight. Opponent ramping it up, ramping it up for sure. Okay, remorse him. Luna and Vivian. Let's get rid of Vivian. The Luna is scary, but we can exile it with the event. How many basics do we have left? Two more after this. Let's see if we can draw a playable card. That's a card. The 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 engine is revving up. If we if we ever draw a Gadwick <laughs> or even like a Shark Typhoon here, oh yeah. All right, what do you hit? Make it odd, 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 odd. Yes. <laughs> Oh, baby. You love to see it. All that removal actually came in handy. One forest left. Come 
My agonizing remorse, not that useful here. Opponent's hand is completely empty. Oh. And we are out of forests. Thank you for coming to the show. There will be no more basics in this library. Wilt. No target. Let's see what we can dig up with Wilt. Triome. <laughs> Typhoon! Sharknado! We're gonna make, uh, make one shark. I'm not sure I'm going to find enough spells to pay off casting it for six mana. Opponent flooding out. There's Gadwick. Thought you were never going to show up. Five, six, seven, eight. Mmm. Mmm. And that is that. We are going to live the Tapland life like no gamer ever has. Just slam those triomes, baby. Mute the wolf. Opponent scries to the bottom, Temple of Mystery. Do we finally get an adventure foe? And does our lack of an untapped land mean we get clover? Not yet. Not yet. So if they don't have the clover, what do they have? I guess they could be a totally different style of deck. I think I'm just going to Uro. Lofty deny the Uro. Okay. Uro comes back. This is some kind of a flash deck. Let's see what they've got for a Cultivate. Okay. Hateful. Uh, don't worry. I can probably still come up with land. Two Lofty denials. Should we Shark Typhoon and try to hit the land drop? I think so. All about keeping the lands moving with this deck, so we have to try. Whiff, but that happens. I'm guessing you're gonna Braze and Borrow? Thassa's Intervention, so how many counters are you playing? Infinite counters? Could be a problem. Could be quite the problem. Honk honk. Oof. Not good. I was really hoping to hit a land there. Agonizing Remorse, then Cultivate. Just, I, I don't know though, if they keep countering my lands, they're not gonna have good cards in the end. So our hope is to wear them out. Mm, that's a good turn. That is a good turn. Can't deny it. Fifth land. Could eliminate this. Let's go for the Gadwick. It probably won't resolve, but we try. We gotta keep just forcing stuff down their throat. If you just pass doing nothing, the opponent will probably uh, be able to draw cards and do other obnoxious things. All right, down to two cards and they have a castle. We could go for even here, that wouldn't be very good. So I think we'll just do the agonizing remorse. Well, next turn I can agonizing remorse into Uro. So this turn we'll hold up eliminate. The opponent will probably play the Borrower, which means they don't use the castle. And we can eliminate the Borrower, or we can try to Extinction Event the creatures. Yeah, we'll try to eliminate the Shark. All right. 
despite some agonizing remorses to try to shred our opponent's counter magic shield. And let's rewind. Eventually you're like, all right, Simic, what you got? Sublime Epiphany, nice. <laughs> this does copy the casting cost though. Extinction event will get it. Eventually, you're just gonna not draw as perfect, right? Eventually? Let's find out. Sublime Epiphany is a heck of a card to bridge your way up into. If you can live that long without having pressure on you, it's really good. Oh, are they tanking? They're gonna cast the Borrower, nice! What else are you going to do? Gilded Goose out of there, and... Thank you for coming to the show. They do get to scry, like... And then they probably get to deploy more threats or have more counters, but... Two to the top? That's scary. That's downright terrifying. Gargs. All right. Well, Gargs will face Uro, but they kept on top. Oh, look at that top deck. All right. We'll play this first to make the opponent think we drew into it like a boss. And they better have something for the Uro, whatever they kept on top. This is interesting. So many counters, and they have Gargaroth. Bang. So, you kept it. Is it a counter? Wow. Okay. That is annoying. That is a good card. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Keep it coming. Revolving Wilds. That can stock up for future Uro. All right, do we kill the Borrower after they cast it? Or do we cast another Uro and get deeper? I think we keep setting up resources. Although right now, if I kill this, they can't counter it, which is a big deal. All right, we'll kill it. We will kill Borrower. We will not kill Borrower. The opponent knows. They know, and they're gonna dig for a counter spell to go with it. Clever girl. Fortunately, we still had something to do with our mana. Alright, let's see what you got. It's a straight up top deck. Is it a counter spell? No. Well, it might be a lofty denial. <clears throat> Let's decline and keep trying to draw more spells. And let's hold up removal. More scries. You have to imagine that they can't survive if this Uro starts attacking. No borrower. Too much stuff can go wrong if you let these things stick around with Sublime Epiphany in the deck. Ooh, you run Uro. Okay. Uro Wars. Gotcha. Except one of us has counter magic. The other does not. We'll see, though. The Black Splash has carried us. The Extinction Event, the Heartless Act, the Agonizing Remorse, they've made things a lot harder for the opponent. And if we can get ourselves to a position where we resolve a big Gadwick, I think the game's just going to be done. Trigger on the stack, kill it now. Before they draw into some two mana counter. Although the counters in this format aren't particularly exciting. Let's thin the deck first. Sure. <laughs> you can thin the deck of basics, but you can't thin the deck of other evolving wilds.
What do we get? Another Uro. Hmm. Uh, do we want to... Like, drawing is usually better than cycling. If that's the case, let's do this Uro first. Because we might also hit an untapped land and continue. G-Unit. How many is that? One, two, three? Yeah. Or just two. I'm thinking back to another game where I cast a lot of Heartless Axe on an Elder Gargaroth. It's given me, giving me flashbacks. My goodness, deck thinning is a total failure. <laughs> it's a lie, man, a lie. All right, five basics to go. Not a bunch of ways to draw to remove the Gargaroth, though. I'm going to cycle this first in case we find a good solution of some kind. A Gadwick would do. Okay, another way to thin the deck. Oh, ho, 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 baby. Doing the thing. Do they have the counter? They have the rewind. Hacker. Hacker located. They take it. All right, we'll bring back this one. Twenty some cards in the deck, but we will not find Gadwick or Shark Typhoon until we have seen every single land. That seems to be a guarantee. Two to the bottom from their castle. Found it. We got them. I think. They do run Sublime Epiphany. It's not a sure thing. All right, we'd rather... Do we chain? Do we trade? When we attack, we get a card. They get a card when they block. I think we do just need to trade this. It's too risky. Too risky to let them keep garging. Uro. All right, so Brazen Borrower is a good solution to the Typhoon. There are a lot of good solutions to the Typhoon, but they've only got one card in their hand. Let's see if they counter this. The deck of infinite counter spells misses a counter spell. Agonizing remorse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right now it's an eight, eight shark. It's only a six, six shark if I get rid of the typhoon. Let's not do that. I might want to make the shark on upkeep if the opponent keeps on top because of sublime epiphany. They keep one on top. But brazen borrower is just as likely. And how many epiphanies are they really going to run? One, two, three. Okay, they only have one borrower left and we've only seen one epiphany. It's such a blowout if they put an epiphany on top of their deck. I'm a coward. Land! 18 cards in the library. And they say go. Well, if they have the epiphany, they get to bounce this anyway. Should have thought about that. Let's try getting into combat. Gadwick. I'm gonna start playing these lands. We're getting to the point where I'm going to where I pretty much have access to my the cards in my deck. Nine. Rude. They 
take it on the chin. Okay, so we need some blue instants to play, which I don't even run that many. So, let's see. Definitely need some cards to cast. Even, odd, odd, odd. Extinction event doesn't really do it. Wilt isn't very helpful. We've used so much removal already. We should definitely draw a bunch of cards, though. We want to cast the Remorse. We want to have some mana open. So this is for six. There were no basics left in the deck, right? I thought I got them all. Oh no, there's two. There's still two. There's one Extinction Event, one Agonizing Remorse, one Wilt, one Gadwick, one Typhoon. This is not great, though. Event for even takes out the shark if we want to, but we can make a bigger shark. Goose down. Popular pillow. Um, trade this for three life is an option. You could also just play this Uro. I'm guessing that's a little better. But we can also have that next turn. So get rid of this, the opponent attacks with this and this, or we name Odd, we sweep our own board and we have backup Gadwick and more stuff in the graveyard. I think we name Odd. And then next turn make a big Shark Typhoon. Yeah, I think their Uro is more important to them than ours are to us. We've got the backups. And it looks like upkeep up scrying to the bottom. Are they finally just out of gas here? No! They top decked another Uro. <sighs> Don't hyperventilate, CGB. They keep on top. Oh my god. Lucky ducky. Let's get an Uro back from the grave and have a Typhoon ready to go. Four cards in the grave. Four mana open. All right. We know they kept on top. Shark Typhoon can't be countered, but another Epiphany would be insane. But let's go for the ambush play this time. The Epiphany, again, could just counter the shark. Or bounce the shark, I should say. They're going to eat the food, so I don't have the chance to wilt it. Seven cards left. We need that Agonizing Remorse. Think I did that right? I don't like this. This seems like somebody with an epiphany. We're tapping the castle? What are we doing? Seven? Oh, Thassa's inner. No, that doesn't do it. Oh, I see. They're digging for the epiphany. 
They're looking at their top five to find it. How lucky can you get, man? How lucky can you get? That was a quick selection. That was really quick. Oh, but it worked! All right, we have to draw the remorse. And then we use the arrows to tap this and we attack for 17 or one off. Oh no. There's no way around that either. I should have played this last turn. Let's see. We want to get our Uro attack in this turn. We can't draw any cards. Or we'll deck. We also need the other Shark Typhoon, which is near the top of the deck. What we needed. Not what we needed. Shark Typhoon, Agonizing Remorse are the relevant cards here. There's the Typhoon. Opponent with a shark. It's just a 2 2. I can't tap it in response. It's only when I play a blue spell, and I don't have many blue instants in my deck, that's for sure. So they absorb this hit. And we get yet another turn with two cards in library. Opponent has enough to bring back the Uro. This will take us down to one card in deck, so we can't attack with Uro. Ugh. We'll try to figure it out. We might end up to where we need to cast this instead. Elder Gargaroth. Okay. Our opponent's at 15 life. They have one card in hand, which we get to Agonizing Remorse. If we want to attack with the Uro, we can't make a shark. But the shark is bigger than the Uro. But playing the Typhoon taps a blocker. The Remorse won't tap a blocker. So they're going to have one blocker, but it can't be a... F but we can tap both of these so they take 11 for sure. And then we're one off? Wait a minute. Ugh. How do I get two blue spells then? No, I can't. I can tap one flyer. They take four. Oh my god, we're one off. Okay, what else? Uh, we can name... We can make another shark. And we can name Odd, exiling everything and tapping one shark. Okay, so we do make the shark, because we're going to exile the Uro. Please let their card be a dud. Empty library. Empty net. Sequence correctly. Pay zero. Confirm. Zero. Actual zero. Tap the flyer. Keep the Gadwick. Extinction event. Name odd. And cycle. Just kidding. Oh! I'm so glad I found that lethal, so you guys wouldn't have to yell at me at home. <laughs> so happy. It's a keeper. Am I fetching black or am I fetching green? 
Oh boy. Turn two Yorvo pretty much punches a hole into this hand. It's not great. It's definitely not great. Tier 2 Gem Razor, on the other hand. Bang, bang. Garrick's Uprising. Oh, that's wiltable. But it's not my first priority. Let's go get black. Let's hit the hand. Try to slow this deck down. Another Uprising, an Umori the Collector, and a Henge. That's a pain. Let's take the Umori. It's the threat. Even though it is a heartless actable threat, it just kind of messes up their whole game. Although they're going to have two Garrick Uprisings, and then if they play a creature and get to keep it, they're going to have a Henge, which is gross. Look at those. Look at those trampling geese. Have you ever seen such a thing? I think we're safe to say go. Would have been nice to spend this turn wilting a Garrick's Uprising, but we didn't get that option. If they play an odd creature, though, we're in good shape. I'm going to, I'm going to cycle the Typhoon to move the deck along. I don't have a use for a baby shark in my in the near future. We want the big, the big sharks. Okay, opponent's gonna make me think about that. I understand, you're, you're frustrated. You wish you two could draw a card. Ah, uh, dog. All right, uh, so your go. And we can, uh, we can do the magic things. Okie dokie. Enters the battlefield. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card. Creatures you control have trample. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. All right. So we can respond to the casting of a creature 4 or greater with a wilt. So we don't have to do it right away. And we have a remorse, which is a pretty good draw. I wonder if I'm supposed to get another blue for the Gadwick. Probably. Ooh. Oof, double henge. This looks like this like this is the kind of draw I get playing mono green. Just this super awkward like three of this identical card type experience. And they find a new Mori. Oops. Oh wait, yeah, I needed to cast Wilt. I had a heart attack there where I thought I needed black mana. All right, tilt to the Wilt. Tilt to the Wilt, I'll take it. Typhoon, you can go. Don't think I'll need you for a while. Ooh, Flash. Flash is a tough one. If this is Flash. Gadwick to try to recover some card advantage. That's not cool. Perhaps not Flash. Not every day I find another deck battling it out with Agonizing Remorse. And they take the card advantage card, which is smart. I've got a lot more of those in the deck. Hopefully we find them. Fae of Wishes, Extinction Event, Birth of Melitus. Fae of Wishes. Esper Control with Fae of Wishes. Okay. Uro. 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 Do 
I put this onto the battlefield? I might need to cycle it. I'm going to wait. On one hand, I need to draw more land. I don't need to draw more removal. Like, every one of these that I draw is a bit of a disaster. We need to keep the deck moving. There's a ton of cycling. There's a ton of card draw. But none of it matters. None of it matters if we just flood out on removal. Alright, gonna have to draw another blue, gonna need the opponent to miss and not draw another Agonizing Remorse. Ooh, ooh, ooh that, that, that bums me out. That, that's not good. Alright, Omen. Probably a Yorian pile, though not for sure. There's definitely a lot of more traditional control elements so far. There's a blue source. Alright, get me another turn with this Gadwick in hand. Don't knock it out of my hand now. And they say go. One blue could be a whirlwind denial. I'm gonna risk it. Who plays that card? Just this maniac. Uh oh. Oh, he's scrying. Love it. Love it. Two on top. Hate it. <laughs> Must be good. Murderous Rider. All right, well, we found an Agonizing Remorse. See what they fetch? What do you fetch in the control mirror? Sometimes I just grab a Maze Mind Tome. Spyglass. They can name Shark Typhoon, I guess? Naming Uro won't stop it. But they haven't seen a Typhoon. And looking at my hand, there's nothing they can name that's useful. Interesting. How will I beat these Fae of Wishes, though, in a long game? They name Ugin. I don't play that card. Oh, the smoking gun! <clears throat> Massacre Worm. Shower the Sky, Teferi, Master of Time, clearly the most annoying thing. They didn't have the mana to cast it, which I guess is why it's still in the hand. So this will get exiled by the Extinction event, but we have another. And I don't know, I'm sure that they have something that hits the graveyard in their sideboard if they're good. You know, they've got like Tormod's Crypt, or they've got Soul Guide Lantern, right? So, we got to avoid those. Get, gotta use Uro when we can. Only one green left for basics in the deck. Alright. Well, we went through our basics way too fast. But I guess that happens sometimes. Yep, Uro gone. So do we let this hit us? We can also just bring Uro back again, get the Shatter out of their hand. That's pretty good. Also, they have to exile their, or they have to kill their own Murderous Rider if they do that. Five. Sack for nothing. Hype. Six. <laughs> Uro. Uro. Eliminate. Good set of cards. Not sure if I need to cycle Wilt or not. 
The deck could ha definitely have like an ECD I need to kill. Yep, there's the shatter. And they have a tome. Beautiful. And when they played it with seven mana instead of eight, they don't get the card off of it. Savage. And they kept on top anyway. All right, tome damage mitigated. Another evolving wilds. <laughs> we'll throw it in the bin when it's time to play the Uro. Here comes Massacre Worm. We can't kill it, but we can make a giant shark hit the opponent. We could name even with this and wait a turn on the shark, but I think I'm just supposed to play the shark now. The opponent has to deal with it. Cultivate that does nothing. Nice. Try on that cycles, I suppose. Down to nine. Uro. <laughs> Pure evolving wilds machine. Uro. Should have sacked the other Evolving Wilds to keep the other Uro in the graveyard. Regrets. I have a few. But then again, too few to mention. If the opponent kills the shark, we can name even with the Extinction event. And get rid of the Massacre Worm as well. Oh, Bane Slayer. Awkward. The Eliminate doesn't help me. Although naming, we could eliminate this name odd, and that's lethal, right? Right. Same trick as last game, I think. Good game. They already know because of the event. That's right. Play this, name odd, exile this, crack for 10. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up, and there was some excitement in those games. Yes, the deck has a lot of cycling and cards that don't do much, like Cultivate and Agonizing Remorse that, to affect the board. And it has cards that are sometimes hard to cast, like Gadwick, so you can get run over. But if you get to play a mid-range to late game, this deck is very challenging and you have to find the line and i love that a lot there's also plenty of room for spice if you want to trim the wilts because you aren't as tilted by clover as i am or you think you can go bigger than clover and beat it that way you can throw in sublime epiphanies elder gargroths ugin the spirit dragon you can add top end i won't blame you i like this very very focused kind of repetitive approach it works for me but find what works for you it's sultai it's there's a lot of things that can be in it. And I don't think that this version is nearly as powerful as the version that had Nissa who shakes the world. This is a much more challenging way to play the deck in my in my opinion. But I think that makes for I think that's better. I think that makes that's good for everyone. All right. So with that said, I would like to remind you to check out MTG Arena MTGA Assistant. The last time I did this, I know, it, it, I was very, very bad. It was a very bad promo. Well, this time is going to be different. This time I'm going to say, check out MTGA Assistant, and we're going to click on the rankings, and it's going to be like constructed rankings, CGB. CGB, CGB, where are you? So, oh, there I am, 123, I'll take it. <laughs> He's rocking my 60% win rate. <laughs> But there I freaking am. You can even click these links. Awesome. So, if you download it, it supports the channel. If you like it, keep it. Use it. If you don't like it, I understand. Not telling you that you have to love it, but I find it a nice tool. If you want to keep track of fun stuff like win rates and uh, see what's going on in the metagame, I'm all about it. So, with that said, download it. If you like it, 
and support the channel. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see all of you cool kids in the next video. Goodbye.